What's up y'all, welcome to the video. Today we're finishing up our Souls-like combat series with the implementation of healing for the player, similar to how Souls games utilize Estus Flasks. In the previous video, we left off with the logic for our boss fight with the addition of some new behaviors for matching a simple boss design. With all of that said, let's get right into it. First thing we're going to do here is make some updates to our combat component for actually healing the player. In the header here, what we'll need to add are the number of heals the player has, the amount of health restored for each use, and the animal montage for the player to activate when healing. Lastly, we'll need some methods for managing the healing process. Now looking at the CPP, first we're going to implement our initiate heal method. In here, we're simply going to get the anim instance of the player, and once that is validated, we're going to play the heal montage. In the heal method, we'll add to the player's health by the given amount, capping it to the player's max, and then we'll decrease the number of heals left. And lastly, in the can heal method, we're going to return true if the player has heals left, if they're not attacking, and if they are not currently dodging. Next, what we're going to need to do is tie these methods together to be used in gameplay. In the player header, we're going to add a reference to the combat component and a method we'll be using for calling the component's healing methods. In the player's CPP, we're going to add this line to the begin play method so we can get the reference to our combat component. We're also going to add an input binding in the setup player input component method for activating our healing method. And lastly, we're going to implement our heal method in here, we're validating our combat component, checking if the player can heal, and if so, calling the initiate heal method. With this, we should be able to activate our healing montage, but there is currently nothing to call the actual healing method from the combat component. The call for this will be within an anim notify with the header looking like any other with a method override for when the notify is signaled. In the notify CPP, we're getting a reference to the player, getting the player's combat component, and then calling the component's heal method if all the previous references are valid. Now this should cover everything we're going to need to do in code, so let's head into the engine and get this all set up. And now with that Unreal, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go add that input binding. Go into project settings, go into input over here, and we're going to add a new action mapping. We'll just name this heal, just like we did in code. And we're just going to bind this to the F key, just for an example. Now we're going to go into our player class, into the blueprint here, and we're going to go into our combat component. And we are going to add our heal montage, night heal montage, and the rest of these values should be fine to use for now. And lastly, we're going to have to go into that montage itself. Go into animations, montages for the night, night heal montage. And this animation is something that I got off of Mixmo as well. We didn't add this towards the beginning of the series, but I just went and added this uh, as extra, but it is also from Mixamo, so you should be able to find this fairly easily. It's just one of the uh, casting spell animations. But in here, I have a uh, little particle effect that I added just to make things look nice. But what we're going to add here is the anim notify that we just made, a and heal player. Not going to have to do anything much more there. We're just going to place it right around where it looks like the actual casting of the spell is starting, right when his hand reaches the top here. We're going to save that, and if we go over and test this out, it seems we are able to heal. And if we try to go and use it three times, we should be able to, but if we try to use it again, shouldn't be able to because we are now out of health or heals. And now this is working all nicely and all, but if you notice, if we start the anim montage, it looks like our player is uh, floating and just still being able to move while we are casting the spell. We still want to be able to move, but we also want to have our feet still be in this running position while we are casting the spell. And so we're going to have to go into our animation blueprint and make some updates there so that we can blend our animations. Alrighty, now in the anim blueprint, we're going to first take what we have here. We are going to disconnect this. Break all pin links, and what we are going to do is in our main states here, where we are mainly just running and idle, we are going to. Where was I just now? In the anim graph, here we go. We are going to cache this, and we are going to name this new cache pose just main states. Or actually, we can just call this locomotion. And in order to blend our different animations here, we're going to have to take our 
cached position for locomotion. Drag this out and we're going to add a new node layered blend per bone. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to drag this out to our default slot. And with that, that should just give us the normal output that we had. But now we're going to also take this cached pose locomotion. We're going to drag this out to a new slot. Right now this is the default slot, but we're going to change this in a second. Going to go into our layered blend per bone. We're gonna go into the branch filters here. And the bone name, so this is where we're going to uh, separate the skeleton a little bit here. If we go into our skeleton, we're gonna to wanna to find where the spine is or what the name of the spine is because we're gonna be only tracking the upper body for some animations and then we're gonna be tracking the lower body for others. Um, so it looks like, let's look up spine. Spine one, two. So it looks like we're just gonna to want to put in spine. And that should be good. Now, what we're gonna to wanna to change here, and we're not gonna need any changes there. So in our montage here, we're going to wanna add a new slot. And the way we can do that is we go into the Anim Slot Manager, add a slot. We'll just call this upper body. And if we go into the slot that's being used for this montage, we're going to go and we're going to change this to upper body. And so when this montage is played, it's going to be played in the upper body slot. And so when we go into this slot right here, we're going to change this to the upper body. So when the healing animation is cast, it's going to go through this upper body slot right here. And so it's going to blend for only the upper body, but any other animation that we use is going to use the full animation. And so that is how we prevent splitting up the attack animation so that we can use the full animation there unless we want to split that up with an upper body slot as well, but we are not doing that. That is going straight into the default slot. So if we save that and we go in test here, we're gonna walk around, we're gonna heal, and it looks like we are able to successfully blend our animations. And if we go and use our other attack animations, you can see it is using the full animation and not just the upper body. And so the last thing we're gonna want for this system is we're gonna want some sort of visualization within the UI for how many heals that we have left. So if we go into our UI folder, we're gonna go into our player HUD. In the design here, we're going to add a little border. I'm gonna place this just a little bit under the health bar. We're just gonna make this 100 by 100. We'll change the brush color to be a little bit transparent and dark. So half opacity and black. And we're also going to add a little image element. This is going to be a 50 by 50 image. And we'll just move this towards the center. That should be good enough. And the image we're gonna choose is a new little element that I added myself, this heal orb just a little icon that I made just for the sake of a example. Um, and then we're also going to add a text element. We'll just size this to content, default it to one, just so we can give ourselves a good example of what this may look like. And put that in the corner there, that should be good. And now the last thing we'll need to do for the UI is we're going to need to add a binding for this. So create binding and in here, we're going to get the player character. We're going to get a component by class. If I can spell right. We're going to get the combat component. And if this is valid, we're gonna get the number of heals and then convert that to text and then we'll be able to bind it there. So, get heals, 
convert that. Now that should be good. Now if we go and test that. See we have our heals in the top left corner here. If I heal up, goes down. They use another one, goes down. Use the last one, it's at zero. And now we're unable to further use it. So there you have it, we are now able to heal in the middle of fights, similar to how Souls Combat utilizes their Estus Flasks. This is going to cover everything for the Souls Like Combat series. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with any future videos I make. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.